Prime Minister acknowledges that domestic and external factors have adversely impacted economic growth, asserts that growth rate in last nine years was the best so far. Dr. Manmohan Singh says he would have liked to do better for generation of employment in manufacturing and controlling prices. Says inflation is a concern. After a volatile session, markets end flat. Sensex ends 37 points down. Nifty holds the fort at 6,200 levels. And smart watches, tablets, bitcoins, we find out key technology trends of 2014. Hello and welcome to Business Wrap. I am Siddhant Sibyl and in News Justin, according to news agency PTI, petrol prices have been hiked by 75 paise per litre and diesel by 50 paise with effect from midnight tonight. On to our top story of the day, Prime Minister Dr. Manmohan Singh spoke at length on economy today. He spoke on corruption, slowdown and biggest of them all very, that is the inflation. Admitting that the worry of rising inflation is legitimate, Dr. Singh said income of most people have increased faster than inflation. He however asserted inclusivity and pro-growth people's policy have been maximum during UPA's rule. More in this report. Exuding confidence, Prime Minister Dr. Manmohan Singh on Friday said that India's economy is set for better times. He said that it's just not India but all emerging economies has faced slowdown in past couple of years. According to him, international factors were responsible for economic slowdown than the domestic factors. Mentioning domestic factors like delays in project clearances, Prime Minister said that these influenced and contributed to slowdown. I have done as well as I could under the circumstances. It is for the historians to judge how successful I have been. My own feeling is that we have maintained and sustained the momentum of rapid economic growth and if you look at the period of nine years that we have completed, compare it with the preceding six years of the NDA, I think it, it emerges very clearly that in most indicators of performance, our performance has been superior to that of the NDA period. He however stressed on economic inclusiveness that has been cornerstone agenda of the UPA government. The past couple of years, all emerging economies have experienced a slowdown. India was no exception. Economies have ups and downs, and we should not focus overtly, overly on the short term. We should recognize that even if we include the years of slowdown, the rate of growth achieved in the past nine years is the highest for any nine-year period. But he coincided that controlling inflation has been an issue and price rise could be a factor for people turning against Congress party. He added that every effort is being taken to control inflation. Price rise was a factor in the, the, the people's turning against the Congress party and I have explained the reasons why price rise took place for reasons beyond our control, because international commodity prices were rising, because international energy prices were rising, and these were the factors which made it difficult for us to control prices as effectively as we could have done. Enumerating UPS achievements, Prime Minister Dr. Manmohan Singh said number of people below poverty line has come down. He said that his government has maintained and sustained the momentum of rapid economic growth. He did express his concern over not generating employment in manufacturing sector and called for efforts to support medium and small enterprises. 
Finally, the Prime Minister said that his government will continue to implement policies to revive growth, promote enterprise and generate employment. Business Desk, DD News. Now getting back to the petrol price hike story, we are joined by our correspondent Arun Sharma on the petrol prices hike. Remember that petrol prices high, uh, have been hiked by 75 paise a litre and diesel has been hiked by 50 paise with effect from midnight to night. Arun, uh, tell me what's the latest update and the reason behind the latest, uh, actually the first hike in this year? Uh, that's right, Sidan. The first hike in this new year. The petrol prices have been hiked by 75 for paisa per liter. That is excluding the state levies and all the diesel prices uh, is hiked by 50 paisa per liter. That is also excluding the state levies. Now, basically, Sudan, the, the international Brent crude prices is hovering at, at around $115 uh, dollar per barrel. And also the rupee to dollar equation is not uh, in the favor of the petroleum company. And therefore, the, the state-owned petroleum companies have decided to raise the petroleum prices from midnight to right. Now, let me tell you, Siddharth, the diesel prices were uh, being hiked regularly after uh, uh, every month. Basically, the diesel prices are being hiked by 50 paise. But petrol prices have been hiked because of the uh, the hike uh, in the uh, the Brent crude prices. Now, let me also tell you, Siddharth, that the uh, the under recoveries that the, the companies are incurring or overall is uh, close to around one lakh forty four thousand eight hundred crore rupees. That is including diesel and the LPG cylinder. And uh, looking at that that factor, uh, the the company uh, has have decided to uh, hike the prices of diesel and also uh, the petrol as of now. Sidhan? Arun, uh, this is a year in which uh, the country goes to a general election. How do you think that we can see how many more price hikes given the fact that this can be a politically contentious issue for the government? Uh, uh, Sudhan, see, let, me, uh, let me tell you one thing that there are two to three months basically left for uh, the government to uh, for the, for the country to go for election. Now this is exactly the inflation has been a cause of concern for the government. Prime Minister Dr. Manmohan Singh also today admitted in his press conference that the 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 the, 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 the basically the four uh, uh, election uh, losses is basically due to the inflation prices and the, the petroleum prices and the diesel prices are playing a spoil sport in uh, in the hiking the inflation uh, in inflation basically. So uh, this is going to be. A great concern for the government also because the petroleum product, the, the petrol has been deregulated. That means oil companies can uh, raise the prices looking at the uh, petrol, uh, the rupee to do dollar equation and also uh, the international uh, crude prices. But also the diesel prices is partially deregulated. That means companies can increase 50 paise uh, per liter every month. It's a partially deregulated commodity that is diesel. But uh, petrol is uh, completely deregulated uh, and that is up to so the oil thank, marketing companies. Well, but obviously the well, arm is filling well, the brand. Arun, uh, Arun, thanks for the, the update on the, the breaking news. Hopefully, we have to live with the latest price hikes because of the fact the oil marketing companies would have then suffered. Now, continuing with the, the Prime Minister's big press conference, speaking on the foreign direct investment, Dr. Singh said that India continues to provide a hospitable environment for FDI and it will continue to improve its practices on it whenever needed. India provides a hospitable environment for foreign direct investment. We will continue to do so. We will continue to improve upon our practices wherever they are needed. Meanwhile, the industry gave thumbs up to Prime Minister's press conference. Appreciating Prime Minister Manmohan Singh's concerns over the economy, India Inc. urged the government to take steps to improve the manufacturing activity in the country. CII said it is reassured by Prime Minister's remark that the worst is over for the economy. In fact, CII's own business confidence index indicates that a revival might be on the card for the economy. CIS, the FIKI said, the other industry chamber said, that it fully shares Prime Minister's concerns that there has not been enough generation of employment in the economy. And finally, as Jim said, it is happy that even in the run-up to general elections, the Prime Minister reiterated his government's intention to pursue economic reform. Time for a short break. Market action up next. क्या बताया डॉक्टर ने तुम्हारी बहू माँ बनने वाली है तूने डॉक्टर से पूछा कि लड़का है या लड़की लड़का हो या लड़की क्या फर्क पड़ता है पहले लड़की का अच्छा पालन पोषण करो शादी करो तो दहेज की चिंता अगर आपके पिताजी आप ही की तरह सोचते और आपको इस संसार में आने से रोक देते तो क्या आज हम यहाँ होते तूने मेरी आँखें खोल दी ला बहू 
मिठाई ला अब बेटा हो या बेटी मेरे लिए दोनों एक समान है अरे सुन तो मुझे क्या सुनाना चाहते हो जो सुनाओ मेरी सौतन को किसको अरे वही तुम्हारा मोबाइल फोन जिससे सुबह शाम दिन रात चिपके रहते थे और कहते थे किसान कॉल सेंटर से बातें हो रही हैं हम्म अच्छा ये बात है हाँ क्यों क्या हुआ अब बात नहीं होती क्या अब तो झट से बात हो जाती है ऐसा क्या हाँ अब तो ज्यादा लाइने और खास तकनीक के कारण खेती के माहिरों ऐसी तुरंत बात हो जाती है और अगर कभी लाइन व्यस्त हो तो अपनी समस्या फोन पर रिकॉर्ड करा दो वहाँ से फोन आ जाता है और समस्या की हल्का मैसेज भी आ जाता है ये देखो आ गया अरे वाह इसका मतलब इंतजार की घड़ी अब खत्म है। हाँ। तभी मैं सोचूं कि आजकल मुझ पर इतना प्यार क्यों आ रहा है <laughs> कृषि संबंधी समस्याओं का अपनी भाषा में तुरंत हल पाने के लिए पूरे भारत में किसी भी फोन ऐसी हेल्पलाइन नंबर आरोप संपर्क करें किसानों का दोस्त किसान कॉल सेंटर Welcome back. Uh, the markets ended flat today. Sensex ended 37 points down to close at 20,851, while NSE Nifty closed at 6,211, down 10 points. The CNX Nifty moved into positive zone from negative zone at the fag end of the trading session. Sensex recouped almost entire intraday losses as European stocks reversed initial losses. The market breadth indicating the overall health of the market turned positive from negative in late trade. Shares of PSUOMCs fell on reports that the government is considering a proposal to raise the quota of subsidized LPG cylinders to 12 per household in the year from current limit of 9. Losers on the chart were Mahindra and Mahindra, Tata Power, Tata Motors, LNT and NTPC which were down by between 4 to 2%. Gainers on the chart were TCS Infosys, Maruti Suzuki, Sun Pharma, HDFC, which were up by between 2 to 1 percent. On to global market action, European stocks reversed initial losses on Friday after Next PLC, UK's second largest clothing retailer, raised its full year forecast and announced a special dividend after holiday sales exceeded the company's expectations. Key benchmark indices in Germany, France and UK were up by between 0.07% to 0.44%. Asian stocks dropped on Friday after the U.S. equities retreated from record highs and a gauge of China's non-manufacturing industries declined. Key benchmark indices in Hong Kong, Taiwan, Singapore, Indonesia, China and South Korea were off by between 0.77% to 2.24%. Japanese stocks market were closed for a holiday. Well, that was so far what happened in the markets today. But by and large, the markets traded flat throughout the week, and dull was the word. Key benchmark indices edged lower on the first trading session of the week. The barometer index Sensex shed 51 points to settle at 21,143. The market closed the last session of 2013 on a flat note amid thin volumes, with the Nifty holding the 6,300 level on Tuesday. The Sensex rose 28 points to close at 21,171, and the Nifty climbed 13 points to 6,304. But the broader markets outperformed benchmarks. The markets were closed on 1st of January as everyone welcomed the new year with a bang. Thursday, stock markets ended on a negative note, tracking weak manufacturing data and passive retail participation. Sensex closed at 20,888, down 252 points. It was Sensex's biggest fall in over a month and end below 21,000 level. Nifty also reflected the same mood and shut shop at 6,221, down by 81 points. Friday, the markets continued the decline. Sensex dropped further by 71 points in morning trade today on selling pressure in capital goods, metal and power counters, coupled with lower Asian shares and overnight decline in U.S. stocks. However, shares in IT and tech sectors firmed up due to fall in the rupee value against the dollar. Business Desk, DD News. And as the world bid farewell to 2013 and entered in 2014, lots happened in the Indian economy. Two days before New Year, the government on Monday gave Tesco and Vodafone go-ahead for FDI clearances. And on 1st of January 2014, the Land Acquisition Act came into force. More such news in our weekly Viz this week. UK-based Tesco will invest nearly 700 crore rupees, partnering Tata's trend. 
FIPB cleared Vodafone's 10,141 crore rupees proposal to buy stake of minority shareholders. The Reserve Bank of India said the current account deficit or the CAD is expected to be less than 3% of the GDP during the current financial year. On 31st December, the world waited for the year to come to an end. 2013 was the year perhaps many would like to forget. First day of 2014, the market opened the year on a flat note. Sensex lost 20 points while Nifty held 6,300 level. Meanwhile, Commerce and Industry Minister indicated further relaxation in FDI policy and expressed optimism for the economy in 2014. The much-talked-about Land Acquisition Act also came into effect on 1st of January. Thursday, Maldivian President Yamin Abdul Gayoom came visiting. India has offered Maldives an enhanced security grid, more defense equipment as well as subsidized petroleum. A number of decisions were taken in Cabinet on Thursday. It has approved the conversion of preferential shares in Indian Bank, Yuko Bank and Vijaya Bank into equity. The Cabinet has also approved land management policy for major ports. MSP for raw jute was hiked by 100 rupees per quintal to 2400 rupees. On Friday, Facebook sued all alleged private message scanning. Facebook is facing A-class action lawsuit over allegations that it monitors users' private messages. Business Desk, DD News. Now the next week's outlook, the Telecom Commission is likely to meet on January 7th to discuss proposals of levying uniform annual fee on spectrum usage across all players in the sector. The markets will officially start the first full week of 2014. Meanwhile, to Asia's largest economy, China, the country will come out with its trade, non-services PMI and inflation data which will provide fresh cues on the economy. Here's the outlook for rest of the week. With markets back in full swing after the Christmas and New Year holidays, a fresh blitz of China data will provide the latest clues on the strength of the world's second largest economy. On Monday, a private survey on the services industry will examine the strength of the sector following a weaker than expected government report. Overall, China's services sector has maintained a steady pace of growth over the past year, accounting for nearly half of China's economic growth at the end of 2012. That picture could look similar when economic growth for 2013 is added up and published later this month. On Wednesday, China's Bureau of Statistics posts trade figures for December and while recent data showed a hefty jump in exports, analysts expect more modest gains in December. Unlike the services sector, exports have recently been a drag on China's growth as a stronger yuan and rising labor costs have taken their toll on sales of Chinese goods abroad. On Thursday, China's inflation data for December is expected to show its first year-on-year -year contraction since 2009. South Korea's central bank meets to discuss interest rates on Thursday and officials are expected to keep rates steady for the eighth month in a row. But compare the one to yen, which has weakened 18% over the past year and that poses a challenge to Korean companies such as car makers that compete with Japan Inc. Competition could heat up as a key theme for 2014. Asia's economies are generally looking healthy, but with Europe and the US perking up again, investors may be tempted to reduce exposure to this region. Business Desk, DD News. Well, after that, time for a break. After the break, the tech trends of 2014. Aaj hamara desh itna aage bad gaya ki baaki dunia ke nazron mein hum ek mahan desh ke roop mein ubhar rahe hain. Lekin unka ek aur nazariya bhi hai hamari taraf. आइए उसे देखें। जाने अनजाने कहीं आप भी दुनिया के सामने अपने देश की ऐसी तस्वीर तो नहीं रख रहे अपनी इज्जत अपने हाथ जय हिंद लखन लखन टाइपिंग मैटर तो काफी ज्यादा है ना पूरा हो गया सर इतनी जल्दी 
सर एमनिटी के दबार ऑपरेशन से मेरी उंगलियां कंप्यूटर कीबोर्ड पर पहले की तरह फटाफट चलने लगी अरे वाह फिर वही फुर्ती एमडीटी और ऑपरेशन का उठाए लाभ आएगी फुर्ती अपने आप क्या कहने अधिक जानकारी के लिए पास के प्राथमिक स्वास्थ्य केंद्रों से संपर्क करें The world has ushered in 2014 with lots of hope and enthusiasm. And for the world's biggest tech giants, there's a lot of turf to fight in for in 2014, from your wrist to your digital wallet. So, what will be four big key te tech trends of 2014? Here's a special report. After a big year in tech with blockbuster IPOs, huge product releases, mega valuation, and of course some colossal tech failures as well, 2014 is shaping up to be just as big. Here's what we can see as the key tech battlegrounds coming up. At number four are the wearables. If smartphones were boring in 2013, smartwatches were substandard. Samsung was the biggest entrant here, pumping cash into awkward marketing like this little gem. The South Korean tech giants pick up lines aren't working on consumers either. They need to go beyond the basics here with new functionality. Otherwise it's just yet another device to worry about keeping charged up. Expect a fight here with Apple, Google and Microsoft all rumored to be entering in 2014. At number 3 are the tablets. When we say computing that now really means mobile computing and the battleground here is going to be tablets. which are dominated by ARM and Google and of course Apple with its iPad Intel though is pushing in hard with its lowest cost processor ever expect to pay closer to 100 bucks rather than 1000 for a 2 in 1 tablet potentially running both Windows and Android at the same time Number 2 are the cash payments now the bitcoin is hard to use it's not all that safe it's volatile in value but frankly it's also the most exciting thing to happen to online payment in years Disruption is coming. We need a cheaper, more efficient way to move that cash around, whether that ends up being the Bitcoin or something else. At number 1 is the internet privacy. In 2014, the debate over NSA's giant internet spying apparatus will rage on. Will America, let alone the world, accept wide-scale government data collection as the new norm? And if not, will the privacy debate sparked by leaker Edward Snowden force meaningful reforms at private sector data giants like Facebook and Google? And how much damage will this all do to America's corporate giants, tech and otherwise as they try to pitch their services and products overseas to increasingly skeptical corporations and governments alike? 2014 holds the answer. All in all a lot at stake for the biggest names in tech as this new year kicks off. Business Desk, DD News. And my personal favorite is of course the smart watch. On to our next story. No matter how little money and how few possessions you own, having a dog makes you rich. But as wealth rises in Asia, owners are spending more on products to feed and spoil their dogs. It's nearly 6 p.m. and this cafe in Singapore is about to fill up with customers and a lot of puppy love. This is after all the cafe for dogs with an exclusive menu featuring the likes of a liver fudge brownie and Mumbai pot. The bill isn't exactly a problem in a city state where median household income averages nearly six figures. Ivy Lim who runs what could be the longest running dog cafe in Singapore finds humanizing of pets as a key reason for all the pampering. I think uh, for the trend of Singaporean youth uh, especially dings where you have double income no kids um, they tend to treat their dogs like their own children just like my husband and I so when you go out you want to bring them along and the pet cafe is a good place to actually go and chill out and for your dogs to socialize in a nice air conditioned place in hot humid Singapore Asia Pacific accounts for 7 billion dollars of the 75 billion dollars pet food market 5 years from now it could grow by another 22 billion dollars Just dog food in Singapore is expected to become 70 million dollar market by 2018. Younger pet owners in Asia meanwhile are also lapping up internet retailing options. Most markets uh, in Asia are also internet retailing is picking up its pace and uh, we have in Thailand uh, a growth of 27% in 2013 but it's uh, South Korea that where uh, internet sales are the most important with nearly 20% of sales going through internet retailing and with purchase of premium pet food product also becoming an emerging trend your pets might soon have a bone to pick with you if they aren't treated well business desk dd news Well, my dog is far less pampered as these Singaporean dogs are. 
Well, time for repeat headlines. Prime Minister acknowledges that domestic and external factors have adversely impacted economic growth, asserts that growth rate in last nine years was the best so far. Dr. Manmohan Singh says that he would have liked to do better for generation of employment in manufacturing and controlling prices, says inflation is a concern. After a volatile session, markets in flat, Sensex ends 37 points down, Nifty holds the fort at 6,200 levels. Smartwatches, tablets, bitcoins, we find out the key technological trends of 2014 and it seems bitcoins will take the lead. And before we wrap up, let's take a look at the chart as to how much petrol will cost now in the various metros. And uh, you can see on the screen it will be flashing the rates of petrol and diesel prices. And in Delhi, the, the new current rate is now 72.43 rupees from 71.51 per litre. In Mumbai, it will be 79.52 paise from the previous 78.56. And Chennai, 76.8. So those were the key highlights of the day in the business wrap. We'll meet you on Monday and hopefully you'll have a good weekend ahead. Thanks for watching. Namaskar.